Hello everyone, Dennis here. In this video, I'm going to discuss with you GCE O Level Additional Mathematics October November 2017 paper, paper 1. Subject code is 4047. This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. Alright, let's start discussing the question. Question 1. A curve is such that d square y over dx square equals 8 minus 6x and the point p, 2, 8, lies on a curve. The gradient of the curve at p is 3. Find the equation of the curve. 6 marks. Alright, so to find the equation of the curve, first, given that d square y over dx square equals 8 minus 6x, so I want to find dy over dx, which is integration of the second derivative 8 minus 6x. And I integrate this, I'll get 8x minus 6x squared over 2 plus c or 8x minus 3x squared plus c. And now we need to find the value of c. So given information, coordinates of p is 2, 8, which means x equals to 2, and the gradient is 3, which means dy over dx is 3. Therefore, when x equals to 2, dy over dx equals to 3. So substitute these values into the dy over dx equation, we'll have 3 equals 8 times 2 minus 3 times 2 squared plus c. So we solve this equation and find the value of c, which is equals to negative 1. Therefore, dy over dx equals 8x minus 3x squared minus 1. And now we can find the equation of the curve by integrating the dy over dx. Then we have y equals integration of 8x minus 3x squared minus 1 dx. So if we integrate this equation, we'll get y equals 8x squared over 2 minus 3x cubed over 3 minus x plus c or y equals 4x squared minus x cubed minus x plus c. And again now, we want to find the value of c to complete this equation. So again, given the coordinates of p, 2, 8 lies on a curve, which means when x goes to 2, y equals to 8. Substitute these values into the y equation. We have 8 equals 4 times 2 squared minus 2 cubed minus 2 plus c. And we solve this equation, we get a c equals 2. Therefore, the equation on the curve will be y equals 4x squared minus x cubed minus x plus 2. Next question, question 2, part 1. Sketch the graph of y equals 4x to the power half for x is less than or equals to 16. 2 marks. Right, so here's the solution. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the coordinates of the end points of this graph. First, we use the maximum value of x, which is given by the question, x is less than or equals to 16. So when x is equal to 16, I substitute into this equation, I'll get 4 times 16 to the power half, or six, or 4 times square root of 16, I'll get 16. I also find x equal to 0, so this is the starting point of the graph. When y equals to 4 times 0 to the power half, and I'll get 0. Alright, so once I get these two endings points of the graph, I can start to plot the graph. This x exists and this the y exists. So we start from 0, 0, and end at 16, 16. So it will be a curve like this. Alright, so don't forget to label this graph y equals 4x to the power of half. Next, part 2. Find the coordinates of the points of intersection of the curve y equals to x to the power half and the line y, 4y equals to 7x plus 4. 4 marks. So to find the coordinates of the points of the section, we need to solve simultaneous equation. So given x, y equals to 4x to the power half, I label this as a first equation. And 4y equals to 7x plus 4, I label this as second equation. So I use substitution method to solve this simultaneous equation. Substitute equation 1 into equation number 2. Then it becomes 4 times 4x to the power half equals 7x plus 4. So 
expand the bracket, I have 16x to the power half equals 7x plus 4. Then I will square both sides to get rid of the half. Then I will get 256x equals bracket 7x plus 4 squared. Expand the bracket, I have 256x equals 49x squared plus 56x plus 16. Then bring the 256x to the right hand side and we have 56 minus 256x. The equation becomes 0 equals 49x squared minus 200x plus 16. Now I can start to factorize this equation. I'll have 0 equals bracket 49x minus 4 bracket 4 minus x x minus 4 and solve this equation 49x minus 4 equal to 0 or x minus 4 equal to 0 so x equals 4 over 49 or x equals to 4 so i have the x coordinate of the intersection point and now i want to find the y coordinates of the intersection point so when x is 4 over 49 then y will be 4 times 4 over 49 to the power of half which is 8 by 7 or when x equal to 4 then y will be 4 times 4 to the power half, I'll get 8. Hence, the coordinates of the intersection points are 4 over 49, 1 by 7, or 4, 8. Question 3. The variables x and y are such that when values of y, 1 over y are plotted against 1 over square of x, a straight line is obtained. It is given that y equals to 0 0.25 when x equals 0 0.04 and that y equals to 0 0.50 when x equals 1.00. Find the value of y when x equals to 9. 5 marks. So here is the solution. The question state that a straight line is obtained. In, that, in other words, this is the linear law question. So we can arrange the equation in the form of y equals to mx plus c. So for this case, my y will be 1 over y and equals to the gradient m times if the x for this case is 1 over square of x, then plus c. And given the information, when y equals to 0 0.25, x equals to 0 0.04, we substitute these values into the equation. They becomes 1 over 0 0.25 equals m times 1 over square of 0 0.04 plus c. Simplify this equation, we will have 4 equals 5m plus c. Then make c the subject, c equals to 4 minus 5m. I will label this as my first equation. Next, the question also gives us that when y equals to 0 0.5, x equals to 1.00. So substitute these values into the equation again. I'll get 1 over 0 0.5 equals m times 1 over square of 1.00 plus c. Simplify, I'll get 2 equals m plus c. I'll label this as second equation. So why we need to do this? Because we need to find the values of two unknowns, m and c. Right, so from here, I will say substitute equation number 1 into equation number 2. Hence, it becomes 2 equals m plus 4 minus 5m to get rid of the c. Now the equation only have the m. I'll solve this equation. 4m equals to 2 and hence m equals to half. Then I can find the value of c which is 4 minus 5 times half. Calculate I'll get 3 over 2. Therefore the equation becomes 1 over y equals half times 1 over square root of x plus 3 over 2. And now I can answer the question when x equals to 9, then the equation becomes 1 over y equals half times 1 over square root of 9 plus 3 over 2. I calculate I will get 1 over y equals 5 over 3 or y equals to 3 over 5. Question 4. The roots of the quadratic equation 7x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0 are 1 over alpha and 1 over beta. Find a quadratic equation with roots alpha square and beta square. 6 marks. So this is sum of roots and product of roots question. So given the first equation, 7x square minus 3x plus 1 equal to 0, the first thing we need to do is we need to identify 
the value of a, b, and c. So for this equation, a equals to 7, b equals to negative 3, and c equals to 1. Hence, the sum of roots formula for this case is 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta because these two are the roots of the equation. It will be equals to negative b over a. And at the left hand side, the two fractions, we make them to have the common denominator, hence it is alpha beta, and the numerator will be alpha plus beta. On the right hand side, we just need to substitute the values b and a. Hence, we get negative bracket negative 3 over 7. Simplify, we get 3 over 7. Next, we find the product of roots. So for this case, it will be 1 over alpha times 1 over beta equals to c over a, which is 1 over alpha beta equals 1 over 7. From here, we can see that alpha beta equals to 7. And now, we compare with the sum of roots alpha plus beta over alpha beta equals 3 over 7. Since alpha beta is 7, hence alpha plus beta equals to 3. Next, we move to the new equation where the sum of new roots will be negative b nu over a nu equals alpha square plus beta square as the roots for the new equation is alpha square and beta square. And we know that alpha square plus beta square is bracket alpha plus beta square minus 2 alpha beta. And then we substitute the values that we know. Alpha plus beta is 3. Alpha beta is 7. Hence, it will be 3 square minus 2 times 7, which is negative 5. Hence, b nu over a nu will be equal to 5. Next, to find the product of new roots, it will be c nu over a nu equals alpha square beta square or alpha times beta square. Alpha beta is 7, therefore it is 7 square, which is 49. Hence, from here, we can see that a nu is 1, b nu is 5, and c nu is 49. Therefore, the new quadratic equation will be x square plus 5x plus 49 equals to 0. Question 5, part 1. Show that second x plus cos second x over second x minus cos second x equals tangent x plus 1 over tangent x minus 1. 3 marks. To prove this identity, we start from the left hand side, which is equals to second x plus cos second x over second x minus cos second x. Then we need to change all these trigonometries into cosine and sine. Hence, it becomes 1 over cosine x plus 1 over sine x over 1 over cosine x minus 1 over sine x. If you don't like this uh, arrangement, you can write in this manner 1 over cosine x plus 1 over sine x divided by 1 over cosine x minus 1 over sine x. Then, the first bracket, we make them to the common denominator, which is cosine x plus cosine x sine x and the numerator will be sine x plus cosine x. Then divided by the right, the right bracket, which is also make them to have the common denominator, which is cosine x and sine x. The numerator will be sine x minus cos, cosine x. And next, we just need to change the division to become multiplication, and the second fraction will become reciprocal. So the whole expression becomes sine x plus cosine x over cosine x sine x times if cosine x sine x over sine x minus cosine x. From here, we can cancel the cosine x sine x from the left hand side, the left uh, bracket and the right bracket. And the whole expression becomes sine x plus cosine x over sine x minus cosine x. Now, I want to multiply 1 over cosine x over 1 over cosine x. Hence, the expression becomes sine x over cosine x plus cosine x over cosine x over sine x over cosine x minus cosine x over cosine x. And everything becomes tangent x plus 1 over tangent x minus 1, which is equal to right hand side. Hence, shown. Part 2. Hence, Find 
for the range of x from 0 to 2 pi inclusive, the value of x in radians for which second x plus cosecant x over second x minus cosecant x equals pi over 2. 3 marks. So to solve this equation, given the equation second x plus cosecant x over second x minus cosecant x equals pi over 2, we change the left hand side to become tangent x plus 1 over tangent x minus 1 and equals to pi over 2 because we have proven the identities from part 1. Then from here, we cross multiply and get 2 tangent x plus 1 equals 5 times tangent x minus 1. Expand the bracket, we will get 2 tangent x plus 2 equals 5 tangent x minus 5. Then 3 tangent x equals to 7. Tangent x equals 7 by 3. And now we can start to solve this equation. The first thing we need to do is we find the best angle, which is inverse of tangent 7 over 3. And we'll get 1.1659 radian. Since tangent is positive, then x is in the first and the third quadrant. Now let's sketch the four quadrant here. This is the first quadrant and this is the angle that we need to find, which is 1.1659. This is in the third quadrant and this is the best angle 1.1659. Hence, x will be this angle, 1.1659, and this is the second angle, which is pi plus 1.1659. We calculate and round into 3SF, then it's 1.17 radian and 4.31 radian. Question 6. Given this diagram, a tennis club makes three equally sized tennis courts positioned next to each other as shown in the diagram below. Each tennis court is rectangular and has sides of length x meters and y meters. The lines in the diagram represent wire netting. The total length of wire netting used is 288 meters. Part 1. Show that the total area a meter square of the three tennis courts is given by a equals 216x minus 9 over 2 x square. 3 marks. So here is the solution. First, let's label the diagram fully. So this is x, this is x, and all these lengths are x. Similarly, uh, then we have 6x here. Similarly, the vertical lines will be y. And from here, we can see that we have 4 y's. So 6x plus 4 y equals to 288. So both sides divide by 2, I will get 3x plus 2 y equals 144. And make y the subject, it will be 144 minus 3x over 2. Or 72 minus 3 over 2x. And now we can find the area of the three chords, which is 3xy, because one rectangle is xy, so we have three chords is 3xy. Then we substitute the y to be 72 minus 3 over 2x. Then expand the bracket, we'll have 216x minus 9 over 2x squared, hence shown. Part 2. Given that x can vary, Find the dimensions of each tennis court that make A a maximum. 3 marks. You are not required to show that A is a maximum. So here is the solution. We have already proven that A equals to 216x minus 9 over 2x squared. So if we differentiate A in terms of x, dA over dx, it will become 216 minus 9x. Since A is maximum, then dA over dx equals to 0. Therefore, 216 minus 9x equals to 0. Then we solve this equation. 9x equals 216, x equals 24. And we can find the y value. y equals 72 minus 3 over 2 times 24. We calculate, we get 36. Hence, we know that the dimension of each chord will be 24 meters times 36 meters.
Question 7. The triangle ABC is such that its area is a quarter times if 9 plus 33 centimeter square. The length of AB is 33 plus 1 cm and the angle BAC is 60 degrees. Without using a calculator, find part 1. The length in centimeters of AC in the form A plus B sub 3 where A and B are integers. 3 marks. So to solve this question, the first thing we need to do is we need to sketch the diagram up so that we can see the whole picture clearer. So here is a sketch of the triangle ABC and it is not drawn on scale. Right, given that the length of AB is 33 plus 1 cm and the angle uh, BAC is 60 degrees. So given the area is a quarter times 9 plus 33 centimeters square, so we know that the area of the triangle is half AB sine C and the equation becomes a quarter times if 9 plus 33 equals half times if 33 plus 1 times AC times sine 60 degrees. So half can cancel with a quarter, a quarter becomes half. The equation is half times 9 plus 33 equals 33 plus 1 times AC and we know sine 60 degrees is 33 over 2. From here, we can cancel the half from left and the right side. So the equation will be 9 plus 33 equals 3 plus 33 times AC. So how to get it? We just need to multiply the 33 here into the bracket here. Therefore, we we'll get 3 plus 33. And AC will be 9 plus 33 over 3, 33. And we rationalize this equation by multiplying 3 minus 33 over 3 minus 33. And now we expand these two fractions together. First, 9 times 3, we get 27. 9 times minus 33, we get minus 9, 33. 33 times 3, we get positive 3, 33. 33 times negative 33, we get minus 3. And for the numerator, denominator, 3 plus 33 times 3 minus 33 is like a plus b times a minus b, we get a square minus b square, which is 9 minus 3. Hence, we simplify, we'll get the numerator is 24 minus 6 sub 3 and the denominator will be 6. And simplify further, we'll have 4 minus sub 3 centimeters. Part 2, an expression in centimeter square for BC square in the form C plus D sub 3, where C and D are integers. 3 marks. So we already know AC is 4 minus 3 cm. So from here to get BC square, we apply cosine rule, which is BC square equals AB square plus AC square minus 2 times AB times AC cosine angle BAC. So substitute all the values from the diagram. We have 33 plus 1 square plus 4 minus 33 square minus 2 times 33 plus 1 times 4 minus 33 times cosine 60. And expand 33 plus 1 square, we have 3 plus 2 33 plus 1. Then we expand 4 minus 33 square, we'll get 16 minus 8 33 plus 3. Next, we multiply 33 plus 1 times 4 minus 33. So 1 by 1, 3, sub 3 times 4, we get 4 sub 3. Sub 3 times negative sub 3, we get minus 3. Then 1 times 4, we get 1. We get 4. And 1 times negative sub 3, we get minus sub 3. And cosine 60, we know that it is half. Now, look at these terms and we simplify. We'll get 23 minus 6 sub 3. And look at this term, simplify, but 2 divided by 2 will cancel each other. And we're left with minus bracket 
1 plus 3 third three. Then we expand the bracket. We have 23 minus 6 third three minus 1 minus 3 third three. Simplify further, we get 22 minus 9 third three centimeters squared. Question 8, part 1. By using long division, divide 3x cubed minus x squared plus 27x minus 9 by 3x minus 1. One mark. So this is a very straightforward question. All you need to do is just perform the long division where the dividend is 3x cubed minus x squared plus 27x minus 9 and the divisor is 3x minus 1. So x squared times 3x minus 1 you get 3x cubed minus x squared. Then, the top minus the bottom, 3x cubed minus x squared minus bracket 3x cubed minus x squared, you get 0. Then what you need to do is just copy down the rest of the terms, which is 27x minus 9. Then think about 9 times 3x minus 1, you get 27x minus 9. So again, the top minus the bottom, you will get 0, hence the remainder is 0. Therefore, 3x cubed minus x squared plus 27x minus 9 divided by 3x minus 1, you will get x squared plus 9. Part 2. Express 6 plus 11x minus 5x squared over 3x cubed minus x squared plus 27x minus 9 in partial fractions. So here is a solution. From the expression given, we can factorize the denominator which becomes 3x minus 1 times if x squared plus 9. So this fraction we can split into two partial fractions where the first fraction is a over 3x minus 1. Why? Because this factor is a linear factor, hence the numerator will be a constant. And then plus with bx plus c over x squared plus 9. Why? Because this uh, denominator is a quadratic factor which cannot be factorized further. Hence, the numerator will be a linear expression. So the next step we need to do is we will combine these two fractions again where we make them to have common denominator which is 3x minus 1 times if x squared plus 9. For the numerator, it will be a times if x squared plus 9 and then plus with bx plus c times if 3x minus 1. So this fraction is equal to this fraction. Therefore, we can compare the, the, the numerator where 6 plus 11x minus 5x squared equals a times if x squared plus 9 plus bx plus c times if 3x minus 1. So over here, our job is to find the values of a, b, and c. We have three unknowns. We can use substitution methods to find these three unknowns. All right, so you can just substitute any value of x, but to make it easy, the first value of x I will choose is one third. Why I choose one third? Because when I substitute one third over here, this becomes one minus one, then the whole thing will be zero. So this number times zero, this whole term will become zero. I just need to focus on this term. Hence, when I substitute one third, the left hand side will be six plus eleven times one third minus five times one third square equals the right hand side only left with this one, a times if one third square plus nine. Okay, again this whole thing will be zero because of this one minus one is zero. All right, now solve this equation for the left hand side. We calculate, we get eighty two over nine. And the right side will be 82 over 9a. Hence, a equals to 1. Okay, so we found the a value. Next, let's substitute x equal to 0. Why? Because if you look at here, bx, when x is 0, this will be, the b will be eliminated. Okay, so now we substitute x equal to 0, the left hand side will be only 6. Right, we got d0, d0. And the right hand side, with a, which is 1, times if 9, then plus with c, because again this is 0, then this is uh, 0, 3 times 0, and minus 1, so only left with minus 1 here. 
Okay, so as you can see over here, the equation becomes very simple. Solve this equation, we have 6 equals 9 minus C and C equals to 3. Okay, we know A value and we know C value. Now we want to find B value. You can substitute any values of X. And to make it easy, let's substitute X equals to 1, right? Because when 1 substitute, everything will be easy to calculate. So equation becomes 6 plus 11 minus 5 equals 1 times 1 plus 9 and then plus with b plus 3 times the 3 minus 1. So we solve this equation for the left hand side, we get 12 and the right hand side will be 10 plus 2b plus 6. Then 2b equals to negative 4, b equals to negative 2. Alright, now we know the values of a, b and c, hence the fraction 6 plus 11x minus 5x squared over 3x cubed minus x squared plus 27x minus 9 can be written as 1 over 3x minus 1 plus if negative 2x plus 3 over x squared plus 9 and write it in a better way we can write as 1 over 3x minus 1 minus 2x minus 3 over x cubed plus 9. Question 9. A bungee jumper falls vertically from rest from a point O. Her velocity, v meters per second, t seconds after leaving O, is such that dv over dt equals 10. After 4 seconds, she reaches at a point x. By integration, find part 1. Her velocity at x, 2 marks. So, to find the velocity, we need to integrate 10 dt because 10 is the acceleration or dv over dt. When we integrate 10 dt, we will get 10t plus c. And now we want to find the value of c. Given that the bungee jumper falls vertically from rest, in other words, the velocity equals to 0 when the time is 0. Hence, c will be equals to 0. Therefore, v equals to 10t. Now, at x, the time is 4 seconds. Then the v will be 10 times 4, which is 40 meters per second. Part 2. The distance ox, 2 marks. To find the distance ox, first we need to find the equation of the s or displacement which is integration of the v dt where the v is 10t so integrate 10t dt we'll get 10t square over 2 plus c or 5t square plus c and again we want to find the value of c which is a constant so given that it is from a point zero a point O, which means that S equals to 0 when T equals to 0. So when T equals to 0, S equals to 0, then C will be equals to 0 as well. Hence, S will be equals 5T squared. When at X, the time is 4 seconds. Therefore, OX will be 5 times 4 squared, which is 80 meters. On reaching X, she then slows so that her velocity, v meters per second, t seconds after reaching x, is such that dv over dt equals 10 minus kt, where k is a constant. Part 3. Given that she first comes to rest at point y when t equals 3, show that k equals 140 over 9. 3 marks. So here is the solution. Given dv over dt is 10 minus kt, hence v will be integrate 10 minus kt dt. When you integrate, we will get 10t minus kt squared over 2 plus c. And now we want to find the constant c. Given that at x, the t will be equal to 0 and the v will be 40. So substitute this value into the equation then we will get c equals 40. Therefore, the equation of v will be 10t minus kt squared over 2 plus 40. 
The question states that when she first comes to rest at point y, when t equals to 3, which means at y, t goes to 3 and v goes to 0. Therefore, the equation becomes 0 equals 10 times 3 minus k times 3 squared over 2 plus 40. 9 over 2k is 70 and hence k equals to 140 over 9. Therefore, shown. Okay, so if you are very confused with the situation here, I draw a diagram here so they can see the whole process clearly. So let's say this is the initial uh, point, point O. So at this point, the velocity is 0 and the S is 0. But it drops to point X. The T is at 4 seconds. The acceleration or dv over dt is 10. The velocity is 10t and the displacement equation s is 5t squared. So this distance ox is 80 meters. And then she further drops to a point y where we will reset the time and at this time we use different letter t which is capital T here and the time is 0 and when it reached point y the time is 3 seconds so in this process the acceleration or dv over dt is 10 minus kt and the velocity v is 10t minus kt squared over 2 plus 40 and when it reached point y the velocity equals to 0 so this is the overview of the whole process from O drops to point X and continue to drop to point Y where she's, uh, the velocity is zero. Question 10. Given this diagram, the diagram shows a circle center O. Points A, B, C and D lie on the circle. The line AD is a diameter and BC is parallel to AD. The lines PBT and QDT are tangents to the circle at B and D respectively. Part 1. Show that angle PBA equals angle DAC. 3 marks. So let's mark the angle. So this is angle DAC. This is angle ABC. Uh, ACB and they are equal. What is the reason? Because this is alternate angle where AD is parallel to BC. So this is the angle PBA and we can see that angle PBA equals to angle ACB. So let's write it down. Angle PBA equals to angle ACB. The reason is because alternate segment theorem. Then we can make a conclusion that angle PBA equals to angle DAC, hence shown. Part 2. Show that angle CBT equals 90 degrees minus 2 times of angle PBA, 5 marks. So based on the diagram, we can say that angle ACD equals 90 degrees. The reason is because AD is the diameter, hence the angle ACD is the right angle in a semicircle. Next, this angle ADC then plus with DAC plus with angle ACD equals 180 degrees because this is angle sum of a triangle. Therefore, angle ADC equals 180 degrees minus angle DAC minus 90 degrees as angle ACD is 90 degrees. Then, ADC, angle ADC equals 90 degrees minus angle DAC. Then we look at this angle. This angle ABC plus with angle ADC equals 180 degrees. The reason is because they are opposite angles in cyclic quadrilateral. And we know that angle ADC is 90 degrees minus angle DAC, hence angle ABC plus 90 degrees minus angle DAC equals 180 degrees. 
Then we make angle ABC the subject will be equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees plus shift angle DAC, which is 90 degrees plus angle DAC. Angle DAC equals to angle PBA. And angle PBA plus angle ABC plus angle CBT equals 180 degrees because they are adjacent angles on a straight line. Then we substitute angle ABC into this equation. Then it becomes angle PBA plus angle 90 degrees plus angle PBA plus angle CBT equals 180 degrees. And simplify further this equation, we'll get angle 90 degrees plus 2 times of angle PBA plus angle CBT equals 180 degrees. Then we make angle CBT the subject. It becomes 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 2 times of angle PBA, which is angle uh, 90 degrees minus 2 times of PBA, therefore shown. Question 11. The equation of a curve is y equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. Part 1. Explain with working why the curve has no turning points. 3 marks. Now given the equation y equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 1, if we want to find the turning point, the very first thing we need to do is we need to differentiate this equation. So for this case, dy of dx equals applying the quotient rule, then we'll get x minus 1 times if we differentiate the numerator, 2x plus 1, then we get 2. And then minus with, we copy the numerator, 2x plus 1, then times if we differentiate the denominator, x minus 1, and then we get 1. At the denominator will be x minus 1 squared. Then we expand and simplify the numerator, we'll get 2x minus 2 minus 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 square, and it will be negative 3 over x minus 1 square. At turning point, dy of dx will be equal to 0. Therefore, for this case, negative 3 over x minus 1 square equals to 0. But it has no solution. The reason is because x minus 1 square is always positive and negative 3 is negative. Therefore, negative 3 over x minus 1 square is always negative, which means that dy over dx will be always less than 0. Hence, the curve has no turning point. The diagram below shows part of the curve y equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. Points P, 2, 5 and Q, 4, 3 lie on the curve. Part 2. By expressing 2x plus 1 over x minus 1 in the form a plus b over x minus 1, where a and b are constants, find showing full working the area of the shaded region. 5 marks. So to express 2x plus 1 over x minus 1 in the form of a plus b over x minus 1, we need to do the long division where the dividend is 2x plus 1 and the divisor is x minus 1. So 2 times if x minus 1, we'll get 2x minus 2. So 2x plus 1 minus 2x minus 2, we'll get 3. Hence, 2x plus 1 over x minus 1 can be written as 2 plus 3 over x minus 1. And now we want to find the area of the shaded region. The first thing we need to find the area of this shape, which is a trapezium. And then we minus this shape, and I label this as A2. So for A1, this length is 5, this is the perpendicular height is 2, and the another side is 3. So the area for the first shape will be half times the sum of parallel sides times the perpendicular height, which is half times if 3 plus 5 times 2. 
and we'll get 8 units squared. Now to find the area number 2, we just need to integrate 2 plus 3 over x minus 1 dx from 2 to 4. And when we integrate, we'll get 2x plus 3 ln x minus 1 from 2 to 4. Then we substitute the 4, we get 2 times 4 plus 3 ln 4 minus 1. Then minus substitute 2, we get 2 times 2 plus 3 ln 2 minus 1. Then calculate, we'll get 8 plus 3 ln 3 minus 4, which is 4 plus 3 ln 3. Now the area of the shaded region will be area number 1 minus area number 2, which is 8 units minus bracket 4 plus 3 ln 3. And calculate with calculator, we'll get 0 0.704 units squared. Question 12. The equation of the normal to the circle x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 24y plus 96 equals 0 at the point R is 3y plus 4k equals k. Part 1. Find the value of the constant k. 5 marks. So, to find the value of constant k, the first thing we need to do is we need to know the coordinates of the center of the circle. So, from the equation of the center, uh, the equation of the circle, I rewrite it in this manner, x squared plus 8x plus y squared minus 24y plus 96 equal to 0, where the x term write with, together with the x term, y term write together with y term, so that I can perform completing the square easily. Right? So x squared plus 8x, where I perform the completing the square, I will get x plus 4 squared, then minus 4 squared. So do the same thing for y squared minus 24y, when we perform completing the square, we will get y minus 12 square and then minus 12 square. After that, plus 96 equal to 0, just copy down. Then we simplify this equation without expanding the, the square here. So we will get x plus 4 square plus y minus 12 square equals to 64 or the 64 equals to a square. So this equation tells us that the coordinates of the center C will be negative 4, 12, and the radius is 8. And this equation, 3y plus 4x equals to k, is the normal that passes through the center, which means that we can substitute x equals to negative 4 and y equals to 12, which we get from the coordinates of the center, to find the value of k. So the equation becomes 3 times 12 plus 4 times negative 4 equals k. Therefore, k equals to 20. The normal to the circle at R meets the x-axis at the point S. Part 2. Given that R lies between S and the center of the circle, find the length of RS. 5 marks. So, to find the length of RS, we need to know the coordinates of point R and point S. So, given the equation of the normal is 3y plus 4x equals to 20, so S is on the x-axis, which means that the coordinates of S will be A0, where the y coordinates is 0. Then we substitute into this equation, we'll get 4a equals to 20 and a equals to 5. So the coordinates of S will be 5, 0. And again, we make use of this equation, 3y plus 4x equals to 20. We make y the subject, y equals to negative 4x plus 20 over 3. I'll leave this as equation number 1. And the equation of the circle, x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 24y plus 96 equal to 0 as equation number 2. We can solve this simultaneous equation using substitution method to find the coordinates of point R. So I will say substitute equation number 1 into equation number 2. Hence, it becomes x squared plus bracket negative 4x plus 20 over 3 squared plus 8x minus 24 bracket minus 4x plus 20 over 3 plus 96 equal to 0. Okay, so you have to be patient to solve this equation. So, I will expand the bracket. I will get x squared plus 16x squared minus 160x plus 400 over 9 
plus 8x minus 8 times if minus 4x plus 20 plus 96 equal to 0. And then combine the first two terms, we'll get 9x squared plus 16x squared minus 160x plus 400 over 9. Then plus if at x, then we expand the bracket, we'll have plus 32x minus 160, and then plus with 96 equals to 0. So simplify, we'll get 25x squared minus 160x plus 400 over 9, and then plus with 40x minus 64 equal to 0. Then both sides multiply with 9 to get rid of the denominator, we'll get 25x squared minus 160x plus 400 plus 360x minus 576 equals to 0. Simplify further, we get 25x squared plus 200x minus 176 equals to 0. Alright, from here, it is a quadratic equation and we can solve this equation. And if we factorize it, we get 5x plus 44 times 5x minus 4 equals to 0, which means that x equals to negative 44 over 5 or x equals to 4 over 5. So x will be negative 8 over uh, 8 and 4 over 5, but we will reject this value because x is between negative 4 and 5. As stated by the question, right, the r lies between s and the center of the circle. So the x has to be within this range, negative 4 to 5. Hence, now I can find the y coordinates of the point r which is negative 4 times the 4 over 5 plus 20 over 3. Calculate, we get 28 over 5. Hence, the coordinates of point R will be 4 over 5, 5 and 3 over 5. So now we already know the coordinates of point S and point R. We can find the length of RS, which is square root of 4 over 5 minus 5 square plus 20 over 5 minus 0 square. So calculate everything we'll get 7 units. Alright, that's the end of the paper and that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write it down in the comment. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it with your friends. Until then, see you in the next video, have a great day ahead and all the best.